Hi guys, welcome to Money Theory. In today's video, we're going to talk about the cost of crime. This video is sponsored by our Patreon members. If you'd like to support our channel, you can join our Patreon. Link in the description below. Recently, California announced a budget deficit of nearly $100 billion. And one of the ideas that Gavin Newsom has to save money is by closing prisons and releasing prisoners. Just because someone goes to jail does not mean they're rehabilitated. They are choosing that lifestyle and they have chosen that lifestyle for many, many, many years to, to land them in prison. So we allow 15,000 prisoners back out into the streets, free to do whatever it is they want now, and there's no place to put them. They're not going back to prison. They're not going back to jail. And so what is the cost to us as a civilized society and, and where do we put that price tag? You know, in, in, my, in my opinion, government's number one responsibility for Californians is the safety and security of our families, our businesses, our homes, our kids, our children, our schools. Now, the CBS News investigation found that the early release of state prisoners is being hidden from the public and is arbitrary. California District Attorneys Association CEO Greg Totten, who is the former district attorney for Ventura County, says the early release of state prisoners and state prison inmates needs to stop now. Totten says it's not prison reform and, it call, and he calls it an anti-transparent experiment that is gambling with public safety. This is similar to the infamous defund the police movement. The defund the police movement was an attempt to save money while also pandering to lobbyists who dislike law enforcement but that ended up increasing large amounts of crime. Now let's briefly talk about the costs of crime. The exact amounts are difficult to say because it varies by the businesses, but the typical damages are the loss of inventory that's stolen, broken windows and doors for when they break in, and potentially physical harm to the customers and the employees. Owner Osi Omuna says almost all of his inventory was stolen. I'm kind of numb. Right? Kind of numb to it because I've, I've experienced it over and over. Umuna says this is the seventh time he's been a victim of theft. He tells me he was robbed at gunpoint in front of his store when it was located in downtown Oakland. And that store was broken into five times. That was when I was like, I can't, I can't be at this location anymore. Furthermore, whenever there's crimes in the areas or when the businesses file insurance claims, their premiums skyrocket, like double. And then these costs flow back to the customers because businesses have to increase the prices of their goods and services in order to make up for the losses. Or if the businesses do not find that this area is safe or profitable, they'll just end up closing. The Denny's in Oakland, known for being always open, is now forever closed because of crime concerns. <laughs> Once again, the chickens have come home to roost. I feel so bad for the city of Oakland because it's like everybody's leaving. The restaurant closed for good at one Wednesday afternoon. Seems like only the chickens will be staying. Denny's officials would not go on camera. But a sign on the front door says in part, the safety and well-being of Denny's team members and valued guests is our top priority. Six months, it, it got crazy. Black Bear, diner closed, Starbucks closed, uh, the Indian the restaurant down the street about to close. And now, in and out is being added to that list of businesses closing their doors along the Hagenberger 98th Avenue corridor. The reason, businesses say, they can't afford to stay open with the level of crime in the area. Now let's take a moment to think about that. When the businesses close, that's loss of tax revenue from the businesses and their employees, which means that the government's revenue also decreases. So, in summary, these politicians try to save money with policies that increase crime, decrease the quality of life of the citizens, in consequence, lowers the tax revenue back to the government. So their incompetence ends up shooting themselves back in the foot. And here's a message to all the progressive district attorneys who release repeat offenders. I understand that you want to give criminals a second chance, but the victims of murder do not get a second chance of life. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed our video. If you'd like to support our channel, you can join our Patreon or buy me a coffee. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We also completed our financial coaching and business consulting website. 
please check it out at moneytheory.net.